What is up, y'all? Well, welcome to The Hill. Brought to you or presented by the National Rock Racing Association. I, I got to get that muscle memory going. I I, uh, I got to practice that. It, it's a pretty amazing feeling, man. I, I uh, you know, <laughs> again, I, I got the uh, date written down here. It's it's, we still got another week here, but this show is a year old now, and uh, I still get flustered when I come in and I see all all my, all my people, you know, hanging out, watching, waiting to hear about some rock bouncing. I uh, uh, it just gets gets the hairs on the back of my neck standing up, y'all, for sure. Just like when we're on the hill and and. Uh, you know, menace fires up right next to me. Thousand horsepower buggies are firing up next to me. You know, it's a pretty amazing sport. This this life that we lead. Um, pretty amazing sport in this life that we lead for sure. Um, Sam Ball joining us. Jacob Salaba, man, I hope I'm saying your name right, Jacob. Billy McGrath, Miss Nicole Dallas. How's everybody doing? Man, we had a great episode yesterday. If uh, if you haven't had a chance to go back and watch it, we did, I don't know, four or five um, driver interviews. We also interviewed Curtis Hazard, uh, Hill Builder Extraordinaire. So, um, yeah, I had a, I go back and, and check that out. We had some electrical bugs. The feed went down a couple of times, but I think we were able to keep it together. Uh, if you can't find it on Facebook, you can also go on YouTube and check it out there. Uh, this, it's the same moniker, On the Hell with Nick and Friends, um, on YouTube as well, that channel. We appreciate if you guys would subscribe to that one as well, as well as um, uh, our Facebook pages and uh, um, all of the drivers' Facebook pages as well. We, we I've been trying to make it a point to uh, mention the driver's social media if it is available um, when we do these interviews so uh, just just to give y'all kind of a heads up Jacob asking is Timmy still coming out with a new buggy it will not be ready uh, this year Jacob um, excuse me if you go back and check out a couple of weeks ago we did an episode with Timmy um, where he talks about kind of what's going on. So, um, 
If uh, you haven't already, the National Rock Racing Association, uh, well, no correction, the Southern Rock Racing page has a new video up today uh, that we just released uh, about Timmy. So uh, go back and, and check that out. Tim uh, giving us a little insight on the hills racing at Windrock. Hey, so um, I got a couple of more interviews for you guys today. Uh, the general consensus yesterday was that y'all wanted to see video. So that's what I did. I set out today to talk to a couple of drivers. Uh, I, I wasn't able to get as many as yesterday, but um, I still got, got some good info, man. I got... Uh, you know, it's got to talk to a couple of drivers and, and, and that's what it's all about. That's what this show is all about is, is sharing, uh, news out of the driver's camps, out of their shops, you know, and out of the pits, uh, or right on the side of the hill. If, if the case may, whatever the case may be. So, um, so check this out. I'm going to start y'all off with a bomb here. Uh, I was able to talk to Shane Christensen. <laughs> All right, everybody here with Shane Christensen talking about Windrock 2021. Shane, uh, you were not in Gold Rush and you were not in a new buggy. You want to tell us about your weekend? Yeah, man. We, uh, we uh, you know, like most people know by now, we were in the Attitude Buggy this weekend. And uh, I, I got to be honest, you know, I... Um, I was definitely considering not racing until the new buggy came out, mm. and uh, just a lot going on. You know, it's uh, it's been a long winter and a lot of downtime with work. It's finally dried out enough, and and um, you know I'm I'm kind of going like crazy right now. So, you know, we uh, it was kind of a I was preparing to race, but I hadn't committed just yet uh, until you know just a, really a few days before the race, and I decided you know what I've got to go. You know, and um, I think uh, I think seeing the, <laughs> seeing the pictures and the videos from Carter Fest, I think I pretty much uh, it got under my skin, and it was time to go get in the seat mm -hmm. and um, you know at least at least have some fun and get some seat time. And man, for real, I I, I said it in my uh, in my post race deal on my social media pages. Um, it was probably for me. I probably enjoyed that event as much or more than any rock bouncing event that I have been to so far. So, uh, you know, there was no stress for me once I got there. Um, I, uh, I wasn't worried about the rig that I was running. Proven um, rig. Yep. It, well, you know, proven, but it's the durability and the dependability right. of that. Rig. Yeah. But, you know, I had already made my mind up. Look, if I back out of the trailer on this thing with this thing and, and it breaks, we're going to go watch and, and, um, and have a good time. So I really, I had no, I had no pressure on myself and, uh, you know, the buggy was going to do what it was going to do. Um, and we had a great time. I mean, it, uh, you know, he'll want to, I didn't even, I, it wasn't even a deal where I really felt like I was, I was, uh, I was in the game. You know, I just, I was more there just to be in the seat and have a good time. Um, you know, it, it's winning or placing or anything like that was never even, it was never even a thought. It was more just go and compete and complete. And, uh, you know, Hill 1 turned out to be a whole lot better than what I ever imagined. I'm still not 100% sure where I finished, but, you know, we were right there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, without feeling like I was really doing anything wild, we were we were fairly fast. And and uh, so it had me excited for Hill 2. Um <clears throat> Matt came to me, Schistler, uh, came to me, and he said, hey, he said, you know what this buggy's going to do on Hill 2? And I said, oh, I'm sure it's going to be rough, you know, and uh, Attitude is known for pointing that nose up in the air, uh, big, big straight up and down ledges. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, you need to go check out the Attitude backflip at Dyersburg a few years ago with Matt on the concrete wall. Yes. Um, the, buggy, the buggy definitely likes to go straight up in the air. Yes. Uh, so it was, you know, he came to me right before Hill 2. He said, hey, it's going to go straight up in the air. And uh, so I, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I want to complete hills. That's my whole thing. And and uh, there's not really, if you go back and look at my last two years, there's not a lot of hills that I haven't completed. So, um, you know, it's kind of a kind of a pride thing, I guess. You know, no matter what I'm in, I want to go to the top. And uh, so I, I think I was a little bit hesitant at the beginning of the of Hill 2. 
Um, I should have just blown up the left side like our original plan was, like most people that, that finished, that's what they ended up doing. Um, you know, I watched Ethan Tanner jump up there and lay over on his side, and, and uh, I just got in my own head, and I'm like, oh, I can't do that. You know, this buggy's narrow, a lot narrower than what I'm used to. Those big washouts, I'm going to end up on my side. Um, so I went for the right side, and sure enough, buggy wants to shoot straight up in the air. So I tried it hard, tried it soft, went back and forth, and, you know, we, we – put a pretty good beat down on it there for a minute because like any time whenever things aren't working the way you want them to you get kind of kind of bent out of shape so I was getting aggravated and once I made it through that spot I you know I uh, I saw a piece of the belt I could mm -hmm. tell that the you know attitude has been known to spit belts off in the past and uh, I saw a piece of the belt whipping in the front of the chassis and I, I I just tried to block it out I said you know what just ignore it just drive run this thing till it don't run anymore and uh you know, we came off the hill, got up on our side, kind of rode a bicycle across in front of the crowd, which I still haven't seen video of that yet, but apparently it was pretty cool. And uh, steering was gone. I couldn't, I was doing everything I could do to get it to set back down, had no steering. At that point, I knew the belt was off. Uh, the buggy was lazy, so I knew I had no blower. And, uh, you know, he just called it at that point. You pull the plug. It's, you know, you can back up and pull up, back up, pull up, and try to get it pointed up the hill. And that was a big, long hill. There's no sense in destroying the rig. I'm, you know, I'm uh, I'm not interested in getting hurt over something silly, and so we just shut it down, and and that was it for us for the day. But uh, it didn't matter. We had an awesome time. To see a crowd like that at the first event of the year was absolutely awesome, and and uh, you know I, it was once again it was a super humbling event for me. Uh, it didn't matter where I went that whole day. People that I don't know coming to me and shaking my hand and telling me they're like, dude, that was absolutely awesome, you know, and just. You know, it's like uh, I get to the trailer and there's people standing at my trailer waiting for me to get back there. You know, I mean, a crowd of people. And um, man, I I don't know. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I deserve it, but uh, but I'm um, I'm uh, I'm super super humbled by it. I'm super proud, super happy. And uh, all it does is just relights the fire and makes me want it that much more. So um, I'm telling you, man, we're gonna put as much put as much seat time in as possible, um, whether it's upside down or right side up here for the next few months. Uh, we're going to ride this thing out when that new buggy comes. I'm going to do everything I can do to be a thorn in everybody's side. Um, that's, uh, that's my ultimate goal. And um, we, uh, you know, we learned a lot in the last two years. And um, I really feel good about this new build. I can't wait. I mean, I really cannot wait. So... Uh, a lot of, lot of excitement, definitely, for me. I, I, uh, I'm a lot more excited today than I was a week ago. Yeah. So it's uh, it's good. That's it was good. a good weekend. That's good. You know, I, I, I dare say that uh, the good Lord put that crowd out there just. Stand by for sound, y'all. All right, everybody here about that. Um, yeah. I ran an internal bead lock. It's called a, but um, at the same time, he's uh, he's easy to work with. And, and <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, at least you're laughing about it now, not you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've, hey, I've learned I've learned over the last couple of years that it, you know trying to stay positive and keep a good attitude. The the trip there was a nightmare. You know, it was. Uh, it was just sorry about that, y'all. We're square and, now. Uh, I'm gonna get you whole, that uh, drone footage back on it all, it was, of that second run. It was epic. Story. Sure. So, yeah. you know, we uh, just to to tell you a little bit about the trip. Um, we uh, we loaded up. Uh, I loaded up Thursday evening, 
Uh, we left out Friday morning. The plan was to leave at 8 o'clock Friday morning. Um, Motorhome and trailer is like well over 80 feet long, so it's very hard to turn around in my lot, especially if the, the ground is wet because I can't get off in the yard. Well, I got the motorhome off in the yard, and I ended up stuck. Couldn't uh, get the motorhome. Couldn't get backed out. So I uh, had to call my brother, waited on Billy, my brother to bring a tractor. Billy, vision um, so wheels. So there we sat, ready to I go. I didn't hear uh, go if it was a so specific way We ended up not. getting pulled out before we ever left my house, and uh, we make it about 70 miles down the highway, and a truck picks up a big rock and busts the windshield on my motorhome. It's uh. dead center windshield, like the size of a golf ball. So... It's not fixable. It's definitely got to have a new windshield put in. And then we make it. Uh, we were like an hour and a half, two hours from the park. And uh, Jenna, she starts hollering, carrying on. What is this? You know, and I'm like, what is going on? You know, I'm driving. What is going on? What's wrong? She said the whole back of the motorhome is flooded. She Thanks, said there's Shane. water everywhere. I said, what? You know, and uh, oh, so no. a, a, a factory PEX line fitting. Um, the collar, I guess, had not been crimped all the way. Oh. And... It eventually, just from vibration, worked its way down. The pump was on, uh, so the kids could use the bathroom. Uh, when the PEX line popped off, the pump just ran. Uh, we ran 120 gallons of fresh water out in uh, my bedroom of my motor uh, <laughs> So, so we stopped at uh, we stopped at a Lowe's, and uh, I got what I needed to fix it, and bought. It. We uh, we loaded up. Uh, I loaded up Thursday evening. Uh, we left out Friday morning. The plan was to leave at 8 o'clock Friday morning. Um, motorhome and trailer is like well over 80 feet long, so it's very hard to turn around in my life. Shane, lot, I know you wanted to see that bicycle. The, the ground is wet because I can't get off in the yard. Well, I got the motorhome off in the yard, and I ended up stuck. Couldn't uh, get the motorhome. Couldn't get backed out. So I uh, had to call my brother, waited on my brother to bring a tractor. Um, so there we sat, ready to go, and couldn't go anywhere. So... We ended up getting pulled out before we ever left my house, and uh, we make it about 70 miles down the highway, and a truck picks up a big rock and busts the windshield on my motorhome. It's uh. dead center windshield, like the size of a golf ball, so it's not fixable. It's definitely got to have a new windshield put in, and then we make it. Uh, we were like an hour and a half, two hours from the park, and uh, Jenna, she starts hollering, carrying on. What is this? You know, and I'm like, what is going on? You know, I'm driving. What is going on? What's wrong? She said the whole back of the motorhome was flooded. She said there's water everywhere. I said, what? You know, and uh, oh, so no. a, a, a factory PEX line fitting. Um, the collar, I guess, had not been crimped all the way. Oh. And it eventually, just from vibration, worked its way down. The pump was on. Oh. So the kids could use the bathroom. Oh. When the PEX line popped off, the pump just ran. Uh, we ran 120 gallons of fresh water out in oh. my bedroom. Of my motorhome. Oh, so, so we stopped at uh, we stopped at a Lowe's, and uh, I got what I needed to fix it, and bought a couple dehumidifiers. Yeah. And and, uh, and we rolled on. So you know we made it. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, pretty problem free on the way home, and and um, you know whatever. It's part of the story now. So. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, at least you're laughing about it now, not you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've, hey, I've learned I've learned over the last couple of years that it's uh, it's better better for me just to laugh at this stuff yeah. because uh, there's definitely once it happens it happens it's water under the bridge you're not fixing it by getting all bent out of shape yeah. so yeah. Um, yeah it is what it is yeah I agree <laughs> hey listen uh, we don't do this alone man who do you got to thank for uh, racing man I got you know this is a there's so many, there's so many unspoken people, you know, everybody's always, everybody's always thanking their sponsors and, and, you know, people that are, that are giving them product or, or, you know, paying their way to get to races or their entry fees and stuff. But, you know, those people are all important, you know, it, it requires those sponsors and stuff for us to be able to do this. And I've got some really good guys on my side, you know, I've, I've got uh, Ryan and Chris at USD Sticky. They've, you know, and you encrypt and I custom. I mean, Ryan just Ryan Ryan will do anything for me anytime, day or night. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously with this new build, uh, Justin Holt is is on this build. A um, lot a lot of a uh, lot of stress right now, trying to collect pieces and and things uh, 
things not not coming in when they're supposed to. You know, I've had an engine blocked ordered since Thanksgiving. It's still not here. Um, so so working with Justin to try to progress this build without some of these these missing links. Um, Justin's been very patient. He's been very good. You know, I'm paying him to do it, but um, at the same time, he's uh, he's easy to work with, and and for me, there that's that's very important at this point. You know. Um, so, you know, I got uh, Rory at Rad Designs. Uh, you know, I haven't got to use their shifter yet, but I'm super excited with this new build. We'll have their shifter and fire extinguisher mounts. He's got some, some shop accessories that he sent me, and, man, I'm, I'm super excited about that stuff as well. Uh, you know, we've still got driven racing oil. Um, this past weekend, uh, Attitude was, was from front to back, lubed with dri driven racing fluids. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a year and a half using their products, and uh, I'd be using them whether they were sponsoring me or not. So I, I really, really do believe in them. Um, <clears throat> Scott Goforth, Vision Wheel, you know, it, it's uh, it's pretty special to have somebody like Scott involved in, in, in what we're doing. Uh, he helps every one of us out. Uh, I don't care who you are. If you're racing, you contact Scott. He's going to do whatever he needs to do to take care of you. Um, can't say enough about the vision wheels, man. They're tough. They're very, very tough. Anybody that's followed Gold Rush knows that I've destroyed a lot of wheels and tires. And uh, I'm not saying they can't be destroyed, um, but they are definitely, they are definitely top of the food chain in my, in my opinion. Um, that that USD sticky vision wheel combo is is uh, pretty legit. I know a lot of people noticed the flat tire this weekend as well. Um, that was kind of one of my hiccups. Um, on the on the vision wheels from last year, um, I ran an internal beadlock. It's called a coyote beadlock. It's an internal carcass. It requires its own valve stem. So uh, when I took those out at the beginning of this season, for a couple different reasons, I just struggled with them. Um, I took so I took them out, get rid of the weight. There's no sense in having them in there if I'm not going to use them. So I pulled them out and I just left a valve stem in there, just so I had basically two two hollow valve stems. Well, I got something inside that wheel, and I peeled that valve stem out of there, so that's why it went flat. Uh, I didn't notice it until I got home, and I seen their valve stems gone. So it literally just let the air out of the out of the tire. Nothing's tore up. Um, I've already put a new valve stem in, aired it up, and it's it's sitting in the shop right now on all fours, and no problem. Nice. So, um, you know, it's uh, the the Vision wheel and USD sticky tires is a pretty awesome combo. Great combo. Yeah. Um, you know, Dave and Shelly Fritz, uh, Fritz Trans. So, you know, David and Shelly Fritz, is, uh, they've, you know, got hooked up with them this year. Um, they've got a lot of transmissions and rock bouncers right now. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, I, I, talked with, uh, I talked with David um, last year uh, towards the end of the season. Anybody that's followed me also knows that I've had a lot of transmission issues. Um, you know, I worked closely with PTC for a long time. Uh, Ed Bendall is always my go-to guy. Ed is Ed is done. He's retired now. He got his lung transplant, and he's out enjoying life. And uh, man, I'm super super happy for Ed. But uh, you know, I needed somebody close to home. I needed I needed somebody that I could depend on, somebody I could trust. Um, those six hours to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, was getting old anyway. And uh, I just don't feel like um, you know, without Ed there, I, I I just wasn't as comfortable as I as I was with him. So. Um, I chose to go meet with David, and uh, to say he was thorough with this transmission build this time, that's an understatement. I mean, this guy, he went above and beyond to be sure that we had the biggest, baddest, best power glide transmission available. Um, and uh, I'm excited. I can't wait to try it out. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, We've got all of the goodies yeah. this time. So um, pretty excited about that. Um, you know, it's... Uh, I'm also working with Holly this year. Um, oh. Holly has agreed to uh, to help me out, and uh, I can't wait to I can't wait to be fully equipped with all the Holly uh, fuel injection and, and electronics on this new build. Does so that, does that include um, working with David Page at all? No. So David David was actually with Fast whenever That's I right. when That's, I had the Fast. Uh, uh, yeah, when I okay. work when I worked with Fast and David, you know, 
I still, I don't think it makes any difference, honestly. I don't think it makes any difference what type of injection system you have, what type of trouble you have. Um, if you call David Page, he's going to help you out. David is a great, great guy. Um, helped me out a lot in the past. But, uh, you know, here's the deal. Um, fast, the fast fuel injection stuff is, is good stuff. It works. Um, the problem is uh, there's just better technology out there at this time. And uh, I don't think if anyone at FAST is going to be totally honest with you, I think they tell you the same thing. There's definitely other, other manufacturers who, uh, who definitely have more technology within their products and more ability within their product um, to do what we're doing. And um, that's why I reached out to Holly, and, and you know, they jumped on board to help me out this year, and, and um, I'm really excited about that. Uh, my go-to guy as far as all of my tuning and wiring, um, Dave DeRamus at D-Bomb Tuning. Uh, you know, there's a few buggies that he works on. Um, I, I got hooked up with him through Ryan at Kryptonite. And, uh, man, this guy is a wizard. He knows all of stuff inside and out. Um, you know, if you don't believe this guy knows what he's doing, uh, Go watch the videos of Ryan Boyd's big block and his new buggy versus, you know, before versus after Dave got a hold of yeah. it. It's like having a totally different power plant in it. So um, pre pretty cool, pretty excited for this whole new build. And, and as we, you know, as we progress here and we get closer, I just, uh, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of like a little kid. getting <laughs> I'm kind of giddy. I'm, giddy. I'm, I'm ready to go. I can't wait to get it all in one piece. And, and uh you know, it's a it's gonna be a new animal for me. I mean, I'm talking new from from top to bottom. Uh, we're trying a lot of new things. You know, um, I I told the engine builder I want to be able to run this thing upside down if I need to. So it is a it's a dry sump motor. Um, you know, we're uh, it's built it's built a lot. It'll be put together a lot like monster truck stuff. You yep. know, to where cool. we can run no matter what. Um, the big difference with this engine is it will be naturally aspirated. Yes. Uh, you know, no blower, no nitrous, um, which means it's got to be very nasty yeah. <laughs> to make the power that we want to make. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a pretty wild build, but uh, spent a lot of time um, with the with the engine builder and, and cam builders, and um, I think we're uh, I think we're going to be very happy with uh, with what we're creating. Yeah. Uh, but simplicity is a big deal on this buggy. This is the, the you know, obviously I like when things look good, but uh, this buggy is built 110% race car. Mm -hmm. It's going to be built to do one thing, and that is race. So, yep. um, you know, I've said it since the very beginning. Um, big part of racing is surviving the race. Sure. And uh, that's all of that, all of my real-world knowledge <laughs> my failures over the last two years um are being put into this new build and and uh, i couldn't be more excited that's awesome hey how do people uh keep up with this new build and you uh how, how can they follow you yeah man just uh it's gold rush buggy on facebook and instagram um, I actually just talked with uh, web web designer again today. We are working on a new web page, uh, a new website for Gold Rush Racing, and um, that will probably we're probably another month from having that ready to go. Okay. Um, but there will be uh, there will be some pretty cool stuff. Um, we are going to uh, launch our our own YouTube channel about at the same time as the website. So we've got some new stuff coming with the new buggy. Um, we're going to do some things that uh, that's not being done in the sport of rock race, and I'm just going to leave it at that for right now. But um, one of my – I feel like one of my strengths um, is marketing. Yeah. And um, over the last couple of years, I've, I've, I've seen some holes, some things that we could do, uh, not just for me personally, but to help build the sport. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're going to – we're going to go after those things. Good. So, Excellent. Excellent. And uh, where are we going to see you on the next race? So where, where are we going to see you uh, racing next? I will be racing um, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend at Williams Pass in Harrisburg, Illinois, with the Point One Series. So um, at this point, I am going to – we are trying very hard to do all of the National Rock Racing Association races 
and all of the point one series races. Not saying I won't I won't uh, you know show up at any of the other stuff, but um, those are those are the two that uh, that I'm I'm mostly focused on, and and uh, you know that's that's kind of who we've been with um, from the beginning. You sure. know we've we followed those guys around and and uh, we're comfortable we're comfortable there and and that's so that's that's kind of what we're gonna do but uh, you know we get this new buggy done and I get some get some time in the in the late part of summer if there's some you know some other races that uh, that we can squeak in during our slow time then we're probably gonna do that to get as much seat time as possible because I'd really uh, with the new build I'd really like to close out the end of the year as strong as we possibly can and we all know the only way to do that is to keep that rear end in that seat. That's right. So. That's right. That's absolutely right. Well, Shane Christensen, I appreciate you hanging out with us tonight, man. I appreciate the update. And uh, yeah, you absolutely. Know, you know you're welcome back here anytime, brother. You can keep us posted, okay? You bet, Nick. I sure appreciate everybody, and uh, y'all stay safe. God bless. God bless, man. Take it easy. You bet. Shane Christensen, we appreciate you hanging out with us, uh, even in the chat here, Shane. I love seeing you drivers uh, come back and and uh, answering questions for the crowd and stuff. Mr. Trip pulling in the house, Bruce Woodward, Donald uh, Casium. Um, I, I know I'm probably butchering that, Donald. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Joshua Lambert, Mark Giles, Miss Kathy Krogh always joining us. What's up, y'all? So uh, we are just kind of, again, recapping Windrock. It was that busy of a weekend. Uh, I know you heard Shane mention it in, in his interview there. The crowd was nuts. Um, I, I, we showed some video of it yesterday. Uh, of uh, Let's see if we can see if I can pull that up for you again. I, I do have this one. This one's pretty cool. This one is... Um, the line <laughs> was when they stopped letting vehicles in and you had to park outside of the gate and then people were lining up to get in so Shane says thanks for all you do for the sports uh, we all love Nick my pleasure man uh, I love this stuff I love this stuff Shane I can't believe I get to Get to do this almost every day. Charles Chris joining us. Hi, Artane Films. What's up, man? Charles, I appreciate everything you uh, you do for me, allowing me to share my content uh, on your page is a big deal. Um, it goes a, a long way, and, and I really appreciate that push. Uh, it's a big help to me. Charles Chris, if you are not following uh, High Octane Films on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, he's, he's on all platforms. Please go over and, and uh, check his page out. Um, I wanted to see, I wanted to put that one up for the, um, the line of cars. Eventually, bottom line, if you, if you were watching the episode yesterday, you saw, um, you, you saw it. We, there was a line of cars that literally wrapped out, went out the park and uh, all the way to the main highway. I've, I've never seen that many uh, I've never seen that many vehicles or that many people uh, at an event so far in the you know this is going on my third year so uh, it was a big deal big deal Charles Perez so so glad to see Shane upbeat and ready to get racing last year his vids uh, videos had a somber tone uh, I agree Charles um, you know uh, Hey man, we all have uh, we all have our our low points, um, and and I agree, Charles. I, I absolutely am ecstatic when I saw the smile on his face Saturday afternoon ish. You know, definitely after his second run. Uh, you know, even though he didn't make the hill, um, it wasn't for lack of trying. It it was a, a mechanical failure. That happened, not something that he could have helped. And let me tell you, I, I was just, I walked up to him and I said, run of the day. And that was it. And I just walked away. And he knew what I was talking about, man. And, and uh, you could just tell. It, the the whole feel of, of that race was just, uh, was pretty epic. It was very, very, uh, very humbling. 
Very humbling. Charles says, no, thank you, Nick. Hey, man, my pleasure, brother. Pete says, I was running late. Took me 55 minutes to get in the park. Dang, Pete. Uh, let's see, Andrew Jones, Wind Rock was a heck of a show, and the crowd was crazy. Great turnout, great people. Uh, I, I'm glad you made it, Andrew. I'm glad you made it. Well, listen, um, we haven't heard from anybody in the RC class, so uh, I reached out to uh, the top finisher man, Mark Crow, and asked him if he could take a second and uh, uh, kind of give us a rundown of his weekend so here's that hang on all right i'm here with rc driver mark crow mark uh was the 2020 season driver uh mark getting started uh the, getting the 2021 year kicked off here at wind rock last weekend uh mark you want to tell us what you brought to drive I meant to say 2020 and, uh, season driver of the win. year yeah it's a uh... Travis Vance built my chassis. It's a misfit replica. Uh, we didn't get to get the panels done in time, but it's what it's supposed to look like. Uh, the the course was similar to what we have at home. It was all dirt. That's basically what we practice on all the time, so okay. that helped. Uh, real quick, I want to make sure that everyone knows back home or, you know, at home that uh, Misfit is a reject fab buggy uh, that Dex Browder drives. So it was a replica of that. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, I, I haven't seen too many reject fab replicas. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. How did it do? Uh, How did it perform? I It's good. Uh, it's a little heavier. Than what I'm used to driving, okay. like it weighs like ten pounds. Yep. Okay. Where my Wraith last year weighed like six. Yeah. Yeah. So, little little different driving it, but it works pretty good. Okay. Obviously, you stood on top of the podium. Yeah. Um, right. Um, you had a couple of drivers, Travis Vance being one of them, filling in for uh, the Hobacks. Um, you know, what do you? What did you think about uh, other drivers and, and the competition in general? Uh, everybody's gotten faster. Uh, the first hill, I think me and Merle was within a half a second mm -hmm. of each other or a, a second or so, and I pretty much knew all I had to do was finish the second hill, and I thought I had I thought I had it won. And, yep. Uh, Curtis built, built pretty good hills. I like challenging hills, and. Hill one was fairly easy. Second hill two was a lot longer. You mm -hmm. had to be able to stand back and drive from a little ways away, and that's hard on a lot of people. Sure. You've got to practice to do that. And, sure. And coming down the hills, we're not used to coming down hills, so that was a little harder. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> Don't ever practice that. Um, yeah. See, there you go. Perfect. Uh, Curtis, actually, a funny story about Curtis. Curtis built the hills for finals and i remember uh there was four hills and i remember you going up to curtis uh after dnfing one hill right uh or was it or was it dex and saying you know you, you were the only one to stump us this year uh yeah the, the finals was the first hill we had all three of us had a dnf yeah uh, i think I'd, I'd, i had a dnf on hill three and they dex and justin both dnf'd on hill four yeah you were the only one to climb hill four that's right um right. that's right uh and it's not that curtis sets out to make them so difficult that you guys can't climb them uh it, it's just um ch a challenging a challenging hill that obviously is still climbable uh right uh, yeah so very cool stuff man um uh what's uh what's coming down the line what are you guys um are we going to see the Browders racing RCs this year, do you think? I, I'm not sure. They're okay. both we'll let them trying to get in a bouncer. Yeah. And it's a lot of work to keep a bouncer going and yep. RCs going and yep. running around all day. And, yep, no doubt uh, about it. No I can't doubt. blame him. Like just, just this weekend, all he had to do was put antifreeze in the buggy. And, mm -hmm. that, you know, by the time you run around and go get it and get back and get it in and Sure. Eat lunch. You sure. done, done burn up your time. Yep. Yep. Missed the RC race. That's when we're racing. Yep. yep. 
Yep. Yeah. So good call, man. Good call. Well, we, you know, we'll miss them. That's for sure. Uh, we, we definitely want to see them uh, on the hills, but um, on the hills, on the RC hills, or or the big bouncer hills, I, it doesn't matter to me. As long as we see you guys, that's that's all that matters. Um, yep. Uh, what about you, Mark Crow? Are we ever going to see you in a big bouncer? Uh, maybe one day. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm build. I'm actually building a survival oh. jeep for oh. for right now. Okay. Uh, I've got the cage about halfway done on yeah. it, and we're going to try to race some of the outlaw. Cool. Racing, doing the survival races. Awesome. That's cool, man. That's but, that's good to know. Yeah. That's awesome. But so, are you guys going to Hawk Ride this bouncer. weekend? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going to try to try to go, and I don't know if we're going to ride or we're just going to race. But okay, that's one of the closer mm. parks to us. Windrock was right around seven hours, it seemed like. Yeah. And then. I like Wildcats, right at six hours for yeah. us, a little, little more. Yeah, yeah, but. okay. So that's a haul for you guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at least you didn't have to go to Texas this year, though. That's probably yeah. even further, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or We uh, done it last year just to race RCs. And I know it. At, at the long drive, just to go race RC car. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> No doubt about it. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you joining me today. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to give us an, any updates. Is there any uh, anybody that you'd like to thank sponsor-wise or, or anything, that anybody that helps you, keeps you going? Travis Vance, uh, he built, at the, I think, the Addictive Racing Crew. Yep. They they helped me out with my chassis and uh, Monster, Monster Bolts. That's where we buy all our bolts and stuff from. Okay. They helped us out this year. Cool. And that's about it. Good. Well, I love to see uh, new new people getting involved, man. That's awesome. Um, and uh, where are we going to see you racing next? We're going to try to make Wildcat, I think. Okay. I'm not, not 100% sure, but if not, Bikini Bottoms, I reckon. Okay. Excellent. Well, Mark, I appreciate you hanging out with me tonight and uh, appreciate the update. Well done this past weekend. I appreciate it. All right, man. We'll look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Thank okay. you. See you, man. Mark Crow. Very humble guy. Very quiet, very humble guy. Great for the sport. Uh, let's see here. Jess Reed joining us. Pete right now. Who built RC Misfit? That would be Travis Vance. Addictive racing chassis. John Walson Hume. Yo, brother, what's up, man? How are you? Always glad to see you. John, John, we gotta get get you on here. We, John, could probably tell you some stories, shenanigans, working in the shop with me. Curtis Hazard, not much. Just stopping by to say hi. Well, I'm glad you did, Curtis. I'm glad you did. Just for everybody uh, joining us who who is just now joining us, like Curtis, uh, we are kind of recapping what went down at Wind Rock uh, this past weekend it was the first southern series uh race underneath that national rock racing association umbrella um the next event is going to be wildcat in east bernstack kentucky am i saying that right charles correct me if i'm wrong but uh that'll be the first northern series race okay so uh heading to kentucky next and we are going to have mr curtis hazard there building rc hills for us again and i am hoping word is if we have good weather uh wildcat has potential and and i will say that uh with the way that they have the parking and everything for spectators uh it is if weather's good enough, we could have a potentially a, an amazing turnout, just as big as Windrock. So, so be prepared for that, y'all. Uh, racing on Saturday. Saturday was it was the big day at Windrock. Uh, for all y'all watching this live and watching maybe later on down the road. Uh, first of all, thank you all for watching. Second of all, please like and share this stuff. Uh, all these drivers that were sharing their pages and stuff, please get over there and, and like 
like it uh, and help those guys out. But if you are going to go to Wildcat, man, think about that. You know, we had a huge turnout. This stuff is growing. We, you know, the sport is is gaining popularity, and that means that we're going to start seeing more and more people show up to these events. So if racing gets started at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I would be getting there at, you know, 8, 9 o'clock, <laughs> realistically. I mean, we're, we're getting there to start setting up around 7. So if that tells you anything, uh, definitely I would be getting starting to get there because those poor folks at Windrock were trying to get in, and, and I know they missed racing. And they have the live feed and stuff, and that's cool and all, but you're not necessarily going to have cell phone service at every park you go to like that. So uh, just a heads up, just a heads up. Uh, I want to I want to see everybody get in there and and, uh, and enjoy the racing that they traveled, that they sacrificed to go see, you know, for sure. Uh, well, listen, I got one more interview for you tonight, which is kind of right on pace to having about an hour long show tonight. Uh, I spoke with, uh, Curtis says, bro, there was people setting up chairs at like 7.30 a.m. I know, I know it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I spoke to Adam Coots, man. Uh, Adam had a pretty bad wreck on Friday, but he stuck it out and he came back and raced on Saturday as well. So we got to hear uh, from Adam, get a little update, and I do have footage uh, from his wreck. So let's hear from... Mr. Adam Coots. All right, everybody. I'm here with Adam Coots. We are talking about Wind Rock 2021. Adam, you had a uh, an interesting weekend this weekend. You want to tell us about it? Yeah. Uh, that was the first time I've been in my razor. I haven't got to use it yet or test it. Uh, just got the front diff put in about two days before we went. Uh we got there, did a uh, hill one went good. It's the, I did do some practice in before, uh, I ended up finding a weak spot in my steering that I built, uh, which was pretty easy to fix once I got home. But, uh, so we bent it back and I didn't go full, full blast on hill one. I, you know, I just, all I thought about this year, I don't want no DNFs. You know, if you basically do every, no DNFs, you're going to be up there. Uh, so hill one, you know, I, I went fast, but I didn't didn't overdrive it. Uh, felt good. Uh, hill two, I was going to do the same thing. I, I so on hill two, I took off, and the first first hill, I ended up hitting a rock. Uh, I thought on hill one, I straddled that rock. Uh, after looking at my video, I wish I'd have watched it before I did it. I actually went to the right of the rock. So basically, that rock was about five, six, seven, eight feet up the hill. So when I came into that corner, my suspension, the minute it hit that hill, just completely, you know, and I'm not used to being it that low. You know, my other buggy was short, tall. You know, I could jump anything. And, uh, I guess it just pretty much hit that rock. I mean, it didn't move. I did pull it out of the ground, but like I said, it, uh, I had, it, <laughs> I hit that rock at, uh, at, uh, race the riches, but I knew I was hitting it. Uh, and I had the brakes on, but I mean, just driving and all of a sudden just bam. Like running into a brick wall. <laughs> well, like, like, uh, basically like if you were doing, uh, two people running back to back, put rope around your waist and you just take off running and you don't know when it's going to tighten. That's pretty much how it was. Yes. Yeah. How are you feeling uh, after that? Uh, pretty good. Uh, the, like I said, the next day my feet hurt pretty bad. Uh, the tops of them, I, I swore I broke them. I don't know. They ain't swollen no more. So I don't know if they, they could have been fractured or broke. I don't know. Uh, they feel fine. Uh, but my hip bone, uh, actually I didn't, my hip bone didn't hurt for the first few days, but it's been hurting all week. If I sit for a while, it takes me a little time to get up. But other than that, I mean, I feel pretty good. I got no bruises on my shoulders from the straps and stuff. And uh, like I said, my neck, uh, that's the crazy thing that, I mean, I don't even feel like anything even happened. 
I couldn't imagine what it would feel like if I didn't have didn't have that uh, Hans, Hans device, device on. on. Yep. Yep. Yeah, well, that's good. That's all that matters. And and the buggy, how'd the buggy fare? Uh, not as bad as I thought. That's kind of why I stayed in it, you know, because I was between, you know, me trying to catch my breath and and you know everybody like, well, get out. I was like, well, you know, I don't want to get out. I'm scared to look at it. <laughs> uh, everything I, you know, put a lot of work in that thing, my first buggy and everything, and uh, so I. Uh, Got it here. It really not. It, the only thing it really did was it broke the two front bars uprights, which is easy fix. Um, it did not bend any of the frame. That's I did not tweak the frame, uh, but it did end up uh, bending the uh, motor mount uh, bar like almost an inch forward, just from the impact. So, uh, and then the fan, it broke the fan, all the plastic clips all the way around it just completely broke. But, uh, other than that, I put it back in the bender and, and bent it back. And I mean, I just cut the front off and we'll put a little bit more of a slope on it. So if it does happen, you know, at least, at least I'll maybe go up in the air instead of grabbing it. Right. Wow. Wow. But I'm a, my first buggy. I mean, I went a little overboard on the metal because I was thinking about the rock at, uh, at uh, race the riches, and it really screwed the front of the buggy up. So I mean, I, I went a little overboard, but sure. but it, right, right there, just proved. I mean, if I'd have did it like my old buggy was, I mean, it would have been, it have been totaled. Yeah, totally different story. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, what about rage, man? Uh, correction, riot. How about uh, how about <laughs> riot? How do riot? Uh, do? I'm feeling good in it. Uh, I feel comfortable. Uh. This is my first race with the USDs, and I end up getting six inches of uh, more up travel yeah. in the front yeah. last year. Uh, that's why I went to uh, Pro Rocks last race, but it didn't. It wouldn't go up the hill. Mm. End up figuring out the transmission was completely shot and some motor stuff, but uh, uh, really good. I just got to get. I got to get used to it. Uh, you know, like I said, the first hill, I'm all over it. You know, because I'm. It's just a lot of, I mean, it's a lot of stuff that goes on in a few seconds. I mean, you're trying to think where your rear steer is, you know, shift in. I did notice one thing. I'm going to go a couple more races like it is. Uh, but I, it had the same gears and everything that uh, Jake had in it. But, you know, that was five years ago, and that was right. going straight uphill. But I have noticed second is not fast enough, and third's too much. Uh, so I'm kind of. You know, I think I'm going to do a few more races to see what I feel like. But, I mean, second, I can't really, you know, go in like this weekend. You could hear I was hitting a rev limiter. Mm -hmm. Third's too much. And, then you know, you're trying to, you know, you don't really want to shift back and forth, back and forth, plus rear steers. So, yeah. so like I said, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing a gear, uh, a little higher gear or something. Okay. What about a, tr uh, I'm sure that a transmission swap from uh, TH400 to a, Power glide's probably going to be a significant size difference, but what about a change in transmission, Brian? I I don't know nothing. That's one thing I don't know nothing about transmissions. Okay. I don't know what they. Do. That's one thing I've never learned. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, if changing transmissions would be different. Yeah. That's the only thing I don't know nothing about. Gotcha. You know what what they do. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, like that, all I know is transfer cases. You know, gearing and all that stuff, but. I haven't talked to Fritz to see what he thought or anything like that, but, but you know, I don't, but I'm just going to go a couple more races and I'm going to do some calling, yep. Yep. you know, ask Jake what he thinks, ask Fritz what he thinks Sure. and go from there. Cause I, like I said, I don't, I couldn't even, couldn't even tell you how to even take one apart, yeah. let alone. <laughs> um, I remember at Carter Fest, I, I heard you chatting about injectors and the motor. Do, do you guys, do you have the motor all? All square now, all set? No, uh, I got the new injector, so when I went to Dyno, uh, everybody was trying to tell me, you know, 800 or so horse, you know. And uh, so we, we ordered injectors big enough for 85 mm -hmm. for, you know, 800, 850 horse, which it must have more <laughs> than what everybody's thinking because at, right, way before the uh, rev limiter, we're running out of fuel. 
so he turned. That's why I was hitting rev limiter pretty easy uh-huh. this weekend because you know, we have it turned down so I don't blow it up. But uh, but now we got 1,200 cc injectors that I still got to put in okay. and then get it re yeah. turn the uh, turn the limit up and then like I said, then hopefully we'll have some good numbers. Okay. All right. Good deal. <clears throat> um. Uh, is there anything uh, anything else that we would would you think about the course? Would you think about the hills? We've never raced. You've never raced at these uh, at this location before. Nope, uh, never even seen them. Yep. Uh, I like them. I mean, it was it was fun. Yep. Uh, you know, a lot of trees, but like I said, it was definitely. Uh, I I feel really good in the racer right now. I just wish I could have drove it more. I mean, uh, I don't have to worry about the steering now. If it does, it's gonna tear something up. But it's crazy the the length, the width, the hydraulic steering. Uh, it just really feels good. Like I said, right? I'm just and like I said, I I asked uh, Ryan Webb and all them. You know what they run in pressure and USDs. I was pretty dang low compared to what they run. I mean, yeah. about half. Wow. And that might you know like I said, I'm you know first race. I don't know. You know I'm playing with the pressure. Sure. You know, brand new buggy. So I'm trying to. You know, trying to play with it. Yep, no doubt. Um, Hoping, you know, just all my goal was was no DNFs this year. Second dang, second hill. Like. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I wouldn't beat yourself <laughs> up too bad about that one. Yeah. I don't know more about it. I should have just freaking backed up and tried it. But yeah. I, when you get that bad a wreck, you don't even... You just like don't even think about it. Yeah, oh, man, yeah, it hurt. It hurt me. Uh, just I, I couldn't watch it after watching it one or two times, dude. I just, uh, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't it, watch it. Uh, it really don't. Uh, the videos really don't do justice. No, really, no, I can't imagine they would. <laughs> I said that was there. I mean, that was watching it live. Yeah, they, you know, if the video just does not do because you don't really hear you hit it. Right. Or hit it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, like in your live video with Cunner, yeah, you could hear yeah. that one. Yeah. But it, yeah. I wish I had a GoPro in it. You know that one three sixty GoPro yep. where see me and then see that. Yep. I'd really been in the in slow motion what my body did when I hit it. It, it jarred the fillings in my head when I watched it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's crazy as fast as it went. I mean, it was almost felt like slow motion. Oh. Uh, had my uh, gauges right in front of me, mm-hmm. and I still remember it. The minute I hit that rock, just the force of it took the gauge forward and broke all the plastic off of it. Oh, and I goodness. still remember. It. Yeah. Uh, and that's first thing. Oh fuck! Yeah. Or you know, and I like. So I thought. Uh, that's the first thing I thought of. Oh, I broke that. I wasn't even worried about. You know, yeah. About, <laughs> or you, or you. Yeah. <laughs> no uh, doubt, man. Hey, uh, who, uh, who you got to thank sponsors wise or anything like that uh, for getting you there? I got to thank uh, MRTs. They're my actual real first big, big sponsor. Awesome. Uh, I, you know, got to, they were there this weekend. Yeah. It's crazy how, uh, you know, they sponsor Paul and stuff. And uh, our rep was there. And it's crazy what, you know, what the these guys do for us because uh paul actually uh uh tore his transmission out of his buggy or his uh, uh bus on the way there yeah i told him they could stay yep. with me i told him they could stay with me because i was by myself and uh they end up getting him his hotel for him yes that's how, that's how good they are yep uh, cool. rc you know rcv and uh brandon with hd uh performance for the front diff, but uh, other than that, I'm hopefully get some more. Yep, good. And um, uh, where can fans keep up with you uh, on social media and stuff? Uh, I got Facebook. Uh, it's a uh, uh, riot or a shake and bake slash riot. Uh, or follow me on you know my my page and then look me up on yep. Adam Coots. But okay, right now I'm. I'm starting to get into other things like that. You know, I'm learning all those things okay. and get a, uh, you know, them, some of them other accounts and stuff. Yep. Good. Um, and then, uh, where are we going to see you racing next? Uh, 
leaving out Friday. We're going to uh, Hawk Pride. Okay. Down to the Outlaw. And then we got Outlaw event. For uh, Outlaw, and then we got Points One. Uh, next weekend is basically our home. Yeah. I mean, it's only about two hours away. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> brand new park. I mean, they they've been putting billboards out. It's crazy. I've never seen a never seen a park put billboards out everywhere. I know. It's awesome. I love it. Well, Adam, I appreciate you joining us, man, and uh, appreciate yep. the update. I look forward to yep. seeing you soon, okay? Yep, should be able to see you at Wildcat, probably. All right, good deal. Thanks, right. Adam. Yeah. See you, man. All right, bye. All right, y'all. Mr. Adam Coots. Well, listen, uh, I and that's all I got for y'all tonight. We are going to be back tomorrow uh, interviewing Rick Munns who is a part of the Outlaw Off-Road Racing uh, team. So we're going to be talking about their event, their season opener, uh, going on at uh, Hawk Pride this, past, this next weekend, coming up here. So be uh, on the lookout for that. And then uh, pretty much going into the weekend, uh, I don't have anything planned, but... You guys tell me, whether you're watching uh, live now or later on, what do y'all want to see, man? Um, you know, I, I, I've got a ton of footage from uh, Wind Rock that I'm going to be slowly releasing for the rest of the week. Uh, but if you guys would like to see anything in particular, you know, hit me up. Let me know. Let's, uh, you know, let's watch some rock bouncing or, or you know, whatever the case may be. So... Uh, I'm going to leave y'all with this short video uh, with Cutter Sorensen. Uh, Cutter is the young gentleman who opened the show for me uh, today. Uh, did the little uh, Welcome to the Hill interview there. And we got to see him in his first role. So we put together a little video for him. Uh, it is on the Southern Rock Racing Series page and also the YouTube channel. So if you're not already following those pages and channels, please get over there and give them a like and subscribe. All right, y'all, I'm going to get out of here. Thank, thank you to all y'all for watching and hanging out with me. And uh, again, if, if, uh, if it allows it, please share this stuff. <laughs> um, I, I really, uh, Shane, Shane mentioned it, how... He was just blown away at the amount of people that were coming to him uh, and thanking him and, and congratulating him and, and um, fans-wise and stuff like that. And, and it, it's priceless, y'all. I love it. I, I don't know how many times I saw people coming out of the crowd, sneaking out because it was very important that for safety-wise we keep all the spectators and stuff back behind the tape. It's, it's there for a reason. Um kind of out of the pits per se, but I was still seeing people sneak out, you know, when they saw Jake Pike standing next to the buggy or Brandon Davis or whatever, you know, people sneaking out and be like, hey, you know, I, I, I just want to say hi and say, you know, you're doing a good job and I'm a fan and man, that was so cool to see that. I, I, I absolutely love that that stuff and, and uh, you know, it, it's motivating. It's motivating. All right, y'all, I'm going to get out of here. Y'all have a great night. I will see you tomorrow evening. And, uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, any suggestions, please hit me up. Please hit me up. I, I want to, you know, I, I love this stuff, and I'm just going to keep putting out what I would like to watch. But uh, if, if, if I'm not hitting, uh, hitting everything, man, y'all hit me up and let me know. Let me know. We'll, we'll get it on here. Um, if you want to see a video of one particular driver or one particular hill or one park or something, I'll, I'll put together a video. Heck yeah, we'll sit together and watch it, man. Absolutely. Um, before I go real quick here, just want to give a rundown of our uh, current sponsors. For one, our presenting sponsor, the National Rock Racing Association, just coming on board after Wind Rock. Thank you guys so much for that uh, huge support of this show. And uh, it, it's going to take us a long way. Uh, our season sponsors as well, Cash LaCroix Racing, 
uh, Dano's cages, Rock Life Off Road, Raceline Wheels, uh, our media partners, Deep Hatch Photography, Black Dog Photography, and Hot Take Films. Uh, also, Lucas at Eagle Eye Productions providing that uh, drone footage that you guys are seeing. Okay, you guys are starting to see where the media partners come into play. Uh, Nick Reich, Reich Racing, huge shout out to you and your family, sir. Thank you guys so much for getting behind this show. And last but not least, Mid America Outdoors, uh, the one and only off road resorts in the world, y'all. Uh, I can't wait for April to get back to Mid America. All right, y'all, I'm going to get out of here. Here is Cutter Sorensen. Okay, we're here with uh, Cutter Sorensen. Gonna be his first National Rock Racing Association race today. What do you think of these hills, Cutter? They're pretty awesome. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I got a turbo buggy, as you can see, it's over there. And I might just try my best all the way up all of these hills and smash them together like a pancake. So it's gonna be good. Good deal. All right. Well, I know you've been working hard on that buggy, so good luck to you, sir. Good job. Hey Cutter, you want to tell us how that was? Yeah, there you go. Hey, Cutter, tell us about your first rollover. Oh, 
I'm gonna check on him. That was a shot, so. Um, Penny, I went and did a wheelie the whole way up, but then I flipped on my side and I rolled through, and it was pretty gnarly. Have, have you been practicing interviews? Because you are, do, are interviewing better than the grown men that are at this race right now. Well done, Cutter. We love you, man.